<sighs> Welcome to Tea to the Sea. Now listen, I have to say something to President Bush. Maybe I'll use this pipe. President Bush, I saw your speech last night. What's going on, President Bush? Is it the advisors? Is it the speechwriters? It's not funny. There are people like myself who are out here trying to defend you. I agree with what you're trying to do in Iraq, but you can't come out and hold a press conference and then not have answers to the questions. It makes you look bad. It makes, it makes me look bad. <clears throat> if you need a writer, I'll be glad to help you out. Um, when you speak about the June 30th handover and a reporter asks you, who's it gonna be handed over to? You can't say, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, do you think it's a cliffhanger? It's not The Apprentice. Uh, we want to know ahead of time. Secondly, don't bring Cheney with you to the 9-11 Commission. If you do, it can only be for one reason. You know, so uh, have him text message you under the table, anything. But if you bring him, what you're basically saying to the American people is, I know this looks bad, but it would look worse if it was just me, believe me. <laughs> I watched you last night. You're in the middle of a nervous breakdown, from what I can see. You gotta get me on board, boy, or you are going down. Well, President Bush gave a primetime news conference last night. He had a tough evening. Look at this. Later, do you feel any sense of personal responsibility for September 11th? Do you believe the American people deserve a similar apology? How do you answer the Vietnam comparison? How do you explain to Americans how you got that so wrong? You never admit a mistake. Is that a fair criticism? Yeah. Will it have been worth it even if you lose your job because of it? I don't. Wow. They were just trying to get. They were trying to get a nice fat soundbite out of him where he'd just say something that yeah. they could just like. Good to see the media is not liberal, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I actually didn't think he came off that bad until the question started. When it, when it was actual... <laughs> <laughs> the speech itself, though, I actually... I mean, me and Nick were talking about this. I actually think that he's, he was actually very sincere in his speech, but he just doesn't respond well to that kind of pressure, which I'm not saying is a good thing for an American president to not handle pressure well, but I thought that he made a good case well, in the opening this speech. This is a witch hunt by the Democrats. Well, the 9-11 case. Well, yeah, you're talking about the line... Go ahead. Yeah, the 9-11. He's the president. He's the commander in chief. It's like a business. You take responsibility. All he has to say is, look, this happened on my watch, and I'm sorry, and I'm trying what to happened? fix it. 9-11. He shouldn't take That's not his watch. He can I just disagree. say, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm in charge of the I military. Disagree with that. Why? I disagree, too. Why? Because he's in office eight months. Clinton was in eight no, years. No, but even Clinton. Yeah. Clinton. Yeah. Clinton. That's why. Yeah. But there's... When you it's think just this, you can't. The fact that we're trying to blame other Americans for 9-11 I mean, right. just shows where we're at in this country. I understand country. that's right. wrong, too, but that's the topic, so let's go with it. He's the bright, what do you he's mean? The, here's the problem. <laughs> the topic is, no, well, my opinion on the topic. You can't blame Bush. He's just not the smartest guy. <laughs> when he got the memo and he read the word attacks, he probably thought it was about the IRS. <laughs> 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 Uh, Folks, the first of all, they didn't laugh. They applauded because it was laughed. an uncomfortable moment. No, it wasn't. You made a, you made a pun, you moron. I did. Go ahead. That was a pun. That wasn't a joke. It was a pun. Was a pun. Listen, you're right. Haircut 20 years too young for you. Oh. 20 years? Hey, maybe 18. That looks good. Kasha Gugu. <laughs> I like it, boss. I don't care about what the Thanks, Ralph. said. So what were you saying, ass, Ralphie? Hey, I'm trying over here to get a regular gig, Mr. Regular Gig. Okay, <laughs> shut up. Okay, all right. Okay. Oh, here we go. The I like it. Like the they love me. <laughs> they do. I like an honest man. I'm a regular gig, Mr. Regular. I think. I, I think this. Uh, ahead, the whole thing with this with questions was. <laughs> Kind of pimp. They kept on trying to corner him. He kept on dodging it like a ninja. It was great. You right. mistake? Pfft, no, never heard of him. Right. <laughs> never heard yeah, of him. Yeah, they definitely were trying to. They were definitely trying to hit him, whole, hammer him. But even his opening speech, it's like there's not. I don't know who writes for him, but it's so it's uninspired. Uh, you know, and the way right. he says it, it's kind of like you know. What I mean, it's just the whole thing is just. Weeks of a guy who's cracking up. One thing I'm tired of is hearing about how it's it's not about a religion, it's about a political ideology. No, stupid, it's about a religion, all right? When you crash a plane into buildings, you get 72 virgins in heaven, not a tax refund. It's about a religion. Was that a slam on the Jews? No, 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 no. <laughs> Sick of Islam being defended. Shut up, stupid. I was it. making a joke, not a pun. No, That's I why they get it and they got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> been busting his balls about this memo that he got on August 6th, right. you know? It said Bin Laden wanted to attack inside the United States. Right. It wasn't really specific. It's not like it was an invitation to, you know, Al-Qaeda Palooza. Uh, <laughs> show up and window the world. You yeah, know. I think this whole 9-11 thing is ridiculous. It's just crazy. Like you said, it's, it, what are we trying to prove? Who's responsible? And the bottom line is, if you want to have a country like we have, where you, you know, you don't want to step on people's civil liberties, then certain things get left open. It's just a, a balance that sometimes... Stuff happens. It's that not way. the it's right time to be looking back and seeing points. Exactly. Fingers. Clinton or Bush. I don't think they did that to Clinton. Arguably, this all happened because of Monica Lewinsky. He was so distracted by this <laughs> thing that, that Osama got out of hand. And the same thing's going to happen now with the 9 11 Commission. You know what that's going to be famous for? It's like distracting Bush. And then we'll, we'll be sleeping when, when 4 11 or 9 13 or whatever it happens, when these animals strike again, it'll all be because we're, this guy's so stressed out. You can see how stressed out he is. His hair's here yesterday when he came out. I'm, I'm getting tired of hearing about how the Iraqi people. You get tired a lot, don't you? I really do. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of hearing about the um, the fortitude. Now that's something you don't want to what? see. I'm, I, I haven't liked you since you froze Han Solo. Uh, <laughs> I don't see that more. Uh, but, <laughs> How's it going, Golden Child? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> Don't pick on my friend, you penis with ears. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, ah, that's not important. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, I wanted to say that uh, I'll, I, I'm getting tired of the Iraqi people um, and hearing about what fortitude they have. Uh, what's his name? Al Sadr, the guy who is the, 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 the militia leader. Apple Sider. Uh, Apple. <laughs> Oh, well, at least it's not a pun. <laughs> I really hurt you with that one, didn't I, stupid? Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> um, I'm just developing a real hatred for them because uh, his father, I can understand like a lot of the people who were, uh, I, I think what, what the Sunnis are the ones that uh, were for Saddam fighting American troops because they're, they're losing their guy and they're losing a lot by us ousting Saddam. The also, parent, Edith, the parent. Um, <laughs> you really are old. Um, the, the, I'm sick and tired of, of this guy. He's the, his father was murdered by Saddam's right, people. Right. And now the U.S. overthrows Saddam, and right. now he's attacking our our forces. I just right. I I now and the more I hear about the Iraqi people, the more I understand Saddam Hussein, and the more I understand <laughs> why he was gassing them because they're awful. They're awful, but, awful people. But it's only. I mean, the problem is that the news prints it like it's the Iraqi people. It's only a split. well. They're not Irishmen. No, but I'm saying the news act, the news comes over and says, there's an uprising. Iraq hates us. Most of the people want us there, but nobody says that. Just it's the whole just, city of Fallujah, the entire Sunni triangle, they hate our guts. No. That's a small percentage of the whole nation. The whole country, Very small. The whole country is it's like the Crips and the Bloods. It's people of color. They're, they're problem everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. What do you think? You really oh, got that. You couldn't have hit that with a funnel. Shut up, stupid. I got the one in, and I was trying to set up a double shot to do entertainment. Mabel King I'm an entertainer, you. What's that? Mabel King is a better pool shooter with her leg. <laughs> Mabel King. Do you know who that is, folks? No, you don't, because you're not you know. 90 like this idiot. You call me old? Because oh, of an Jesus. escalating drug-related turf war, officials in Brazil are planning to enclose two dangerous slums of the 10-foot wall. Here's a quote from the deputy governor of Rio, and I'll do the Brazilian accent. The wall won't be put an end to the violence in the slums, but if we don't contain it, it will destroy the surrounding forest, the economy of Rio de Janeiro, and the lives of the city's residents. He says the J, I don't know why. Uh, we can no longer watch passively. It needs to be built urgently. What do you guys think about this now? It's a good point. We should do it around East Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, well, he knows East Brooklyn. That's the next step here, actually. Why don't they do what we do here, which is put gates around the rich, the rich people? It's a gated community. Put a roof on it. It's a prison. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we build a wall around the whole city? Then we have Kurt Russell come in here and get the president. <laughs> right Once up, again, right I'm glad to see I'm well, not the only old reference bastard. You're this couch I know, I alone. I get one of these yet. Well, I happen to, uh, as me, someone who's been to Rio, oh. uh, as a... As an a, as a worker, yes. and a liberator. Go ahead. I, um, as a whore.
<laughs> That's pretty much the point. Yeah, well, I don't uh, really care if they wall off the slums or not, as long as the prostitutes can get to my hotel room. <laughs> And it's not about, by the way... Jim, that's where the ugly American phrase comes no, from. No, but I was only kidding. I really didn't mean that. Um, one what about thing, the Gracie brothers? Um, I don't know them. I hear they're uncut and in good shape. They are. That's the this end looks of... looks like uh, Rich Voss on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest things in life when you're a kid is driving around with your dad at the rich neighborhoods, being able to go wherever you want. How are poor people ever going to rise above it if they're caged in like that? With a ladder. <laughs> well, but this... But wait, the other... There's... This, this is a perfect example of a war problem. Let's get serious for one second. Look, he got these kids in his neighborhood, but on the one hand, you said, oh, yeah, they're walling in the community. On the other hand, if they're really ruining Rio's right. economy and they're out there apparently going wild every day, yeah. so then everybody's going to be poor. So what is the solution? So where's, where's the argument? I don't even see that. Well, the, the argument here. is, on the one hand, you're saying, what about all the people that are stuck with these psychopaths in a and war community they happen to live there, but they're not in the gangs. I mean, that's pretty... Well, you can still come and go, right? There's doors... Right, but it does kind of make it like a place where it's like, hey, man... I know. love stuff like this. I like security fences. Right. I, I like uh, guards. I like You know the rubber things at the supermarket that divide the fool between the idiot behind? <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> that's the best invention of all time. Those are your eggs. This is my milk. Stay away from me, you <laughs> <please. laughs> Makes it for a nice, clean world. <laughs> Uh, I like that. With a little segregation. All right. Due to the FCC's crackdown on indecency, CBS has decided to cancel this year's Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's a look at last year's show. Just funny. He's looking. He's looking for the weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> that was just funny. <laughs> uh, so, what do you guys think about the uh, CBS uh, not doing the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show? It's ridiculous. I know it's, it's terrible. If they're worried about the nipple of a model popping out, why don't they just cover the nipple with the mouth of another model? And that, the only problem is the solution. The point. That's That's right. Right. Once again, I ain't always been taking the other side. I'm lying. I love to take the other side. It's the only reason I came in comedy, to take anyone's other side. But don't you think right. that if you're sitting with a couple of little kids, Ugh. at what point? Turn what? the channel. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. so you think little kids, it doesn't matter. Who watches a lingerie show with their kids? Who's seen more <laughs> women's breasts? Besides Jim Norton. Yeah, exactly. Who has seen more women's breasts than little kids? It's the first thing we stick in their mouth when they're born. <laughs> Right, so what, it's a natural thing. It's like a, uh, my nephew was uh, watching Janet Jackson. He goes, I remember that it was delicious. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was having flashbacks. At least the guy from Victoria's Secret had the balls to admit that it was Washington's fault and that he wasn't pulling it himself like the other networks do. Oh, like what? Well, you know, they pulled some other show from NYPD Blue and Naked Boob or oh, something. They, they, they were all like, we don't feel like it's the right climate. Uh, At least the Victoria's Secret management was like, hey, man, it's I'm not scared. us. It's at the FCC. It's all fallout from Janet Jackson, man. I mean, the last time that a black nipple caused that much trouble, Patrice took a shirt off on the set. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> And where's the old white men in Washington that appreciate black women's nipples like Strom Thurmond when you need him? Yeah. When he died. It yeah, all well, started when he died. It all started when he died. So you guys think that basically, that what's the line of censorship then? I, 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 it's crazy. It, if you can, can masturbate and laugh, it's not good. Why, why are we so hung up on sex? We're all a product of sex. Which is kind of depressing when you think about it. I mean, the only reason we're here tonight, you know, because my dad was too lazy to pull out on a Friday night, 1962. But, it, I get, you know, we're, we're, violence is fine. We have we have no problem with kids watching violence, but a, a titty is like a big deal. Yeah, tail. it is kind of a strange thing. I really do resent the fact that because of Janet Jackson, me and my friend can't watch the Victoria's Secret special together and, you know, help each other out a little. <laughs> He's right. What? He's right. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> He's right. You know, a lot of comics pass through the tough crowd studio. They stop by, tell a few jokes, and vanish back into the comedy netherworld. But we never find out much about them as human beings. So I thought it would be nice... Uh, to learn a bit about tonight's guests, and same way we did all back in kindergarten, that's right, show and tell. Let's see what these crazy kids have brought for us. Well, hello there, Mr. Ross. <laughs> what do you have to show us today? Oh, well, 
I got a watch uh, at the Al Rashid Hotel in uh, Baghdad when I was there in the U.S. I know there's a soldier here, so I wear it. Uh, the, the hotel since been destroyed. Oh. So I wear it to remind myself that I live in a safe country, Colin. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it's got Saddam's face on it. <laughs> and Saddam, if you're watching, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still think. I also have a Tariq Aziz money clip. You do? Oh, you're doing good. I got all this other you know, tourist stuff. Nick, Nick, what do you have? I got a picture of my grandparents who have since passed. Which camera I'm looking at? It's like Price is Right here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but my grandmother's missing a leg in the picture. We can't figure it. Look, she's got one leg. <laughs> and she had two when I knew her. <laughs> it's like she's a scarecrow. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's one thing if it was broken, you'd understand she's Italian, but she, she's missing a leg. Yeah. She didn't do it. It's over. <laughs> It's over on the other side of the field stomping grapes. Ralphie! <laughs> what do you got, Ralphie? Ralphie! Sorry about your in-laws. Uh, this is uh, my dog Pimp's collar. That's why I brought... You have a dog named Pimp? Yeah, and his collar says, that bitch better have my money. <laughs> All right. He's great. And finally, James Norton. What do you have? Um, this is my first bit of press in my life. It's a newspaper article from when I was 13 years old. Um, and I, uh, oh my God. I play, and you can see my idol, Ozzy Osbourne, is actually in the same paper. Um, Why are you dressed like Adrian from Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> it was for uh, playing asteroids on a video machine for 10 hours uh, in January of 1982. <laughs> oh, folks, you know what? This was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> We'll be right back after this commercial. Now, because uh, we never get to some subjects on the show, because we're spontaneous, it's part of the charm. No? Um, anyway, there's a new diet Bible book. So what do you got? Uh, give us a new diet of your own based on your own personal philosophy. Nick. I don't have a personal philosophy, but I read where there are diets based on the uh, New Testament now. <laughs> it's true. Only society superficial as ours could interpret the story of our Lord and Savior, you know, life and death, as a way to sculpt it abs in just eight minutes. <laughs> you know, when Jesus died uh, on the cross for our sins, I don't think he had love handles in mind. <laughs> What, what's next? Through. What's next? The Holy Gospel according to Jared? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralphie. Okay. Well, my diet is called the eat it all and who cares what happens diet. It's, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, applause. Yeah. It's a diet that uh, people are on it that are happy and full. In fact, eating all that food covers up all the drama in life. It's nature's Prozac. What's wrong with being fat? Nothing. People, you have to die of something, and fat is as good as anything. Yeah. Like, like, Stop reporting. Sorry. Yeah. Like, just I since November, I've, I do I've been off this diet, and I've lost 135 pounds. Thank you. An impressive number, but remember, I couldn't ever... Lost that weight if I hadn't have put it on in the first place. Thank you, Eat It All Diet. Applause is bad. Laughs are good. Jeff. All right. Like the Maker's Diet, which is based on the teachings of the Bible, I also envision a diet based on the Bible. Being on the road a lot as a comic, sometimes I'm in small towns, I get hungry late at night, there's nothing open, there's usually a Bible in the hotel room. So instead of using the Bible for its teachings, I say go a step further and use the Bible for its nutrients. I say eat the Bible, everybody, <laughs> front to back, and the Jews should eat it back to front. I know it sounds like heavy, but a little coleslaw and Russian dressing, that is good eating. Ralphie, can I get a what what? Holla! I wouldn't say the Koran, but it gave me diarrhea. All right, Jim. Jim Norton. Well, um, I've had kind of like a little plump belly and mushy bosoms for some time now, and uh, I've been told that when I'm sitting nude, I look like a uh, pregnant baboon. Uh, uh, 
For a long time, my diet philosophy was uh, eat whatever you want, but only sleep with girls who are over 400 pounds, <laughs> which also goes hand in hand with the age old philosophy is the uh, fatter a girl is, the more likely she is to let you cheat on her. Um, uh, <laughs> folks, he's got a point. Go I've ahead. since abandoned this diet for the fancy new throw out your condoms and sleep with the Haitian prostitutes weight loss plan. Uh, the beautiful thing about this diet is that you never know exactly when it's going to start taking effect or how many people you'll have to apologize to once it does. <laughs> Oh, there you go, the feel-good diet of the year. That's the show, folks. So, uh, you end the show on a Haitian prostitute uh, diet joke. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any, any comment on that? Well, you know, like it said, that's the show. You know, it's it can end on anything, and sometimes some people might, uh, you know, not like it. Sometimes that someone might be me. It doesn't really matter. Apparently, it's you know. <laughs> apparently, it's a real uh, democracy, anarchy out there. You know, people say what they want, and you know, who am I to judge? <laughs> Tonight, you criticized Jim Norton for making a pun.